the revenue actually goes down because they say, why, why should I be working for government? I must as well pack and go. What you need to do is widen the tax base and to capture more and more people. Should, that shouldn't are we deal outside. with multiple taxation, yeah. perhaps at the same time or before? They speak about widening the tax base because that's an age-long complaint. Mm. Multiple taxation. Yes. Well, indeed, we need to look at those issues. Uh, I'm not a tax expert, but we need to look at those issues. Uh, for example, a friend of mine who brought a lot of capital to Lagos complained very bitterly. And in fact, he, he packed his bags and left. He was just opening the office, putting his signboard before he started business. All kinds of taxes yeah. were coming, all kinds uh -huh. of people. And some of them not even genuine. Uh, and, uh, and he got fed up and said, look, I don't need this. See, I can go to Ghana, I can go elsewhere. So multiple taxation, we need to look at that. But there is a genuine issue of the tax base. Only, uh, this data came out, only about 64,000 Nigerians are paying anything more than, I think, how many, 500,000 or so tax. So you ask yourself, how many billionaires do we have in this country? How much taxes are they actually paying? And, and we need to also understand that, in fact, political theory has shown that taxation is good for democracy. Because when people pay tax, yeah, and that is how it started in Lagos, started very, very well in Lagos. People say, okay, well, it's annoying, but we are paying this tax fine, but we demand to know what is happening to the taxes we are paying. We need a cleaner Lagos, we need uh, decongestion, we need a better, better environment for our children, and all of that. And the peoples of Lagos, we are, uh, at least for, uh, for some time, we are getting very good results uh, from you know, the increased taxation. And I believe that Nigerians will not mind very much if they see the good work that their taxes are doing. And uh, so we should encourage everybody to pay taxes uh, because it is good for democracy, it is good for our country. And if we did that, uh, you know, the extractive capacity of the state will more than cover up for, for the high rate of interest payments that we're doing at present. And obviously, from a, from a public finance point of view, it's not sustainable. 66% well, is very high. Speaking more specifically now about mm. this, you know, program, you have said that it's, they haven't quite said how. Mm. You've also talked about, you know, the silence on uh, the civil service. Yes. And, uh, you know, it leaves a very big question. But sure. you have also worked, uh, you know, in a public institution. If sure. you were to talk about the how, you know, for this program from what you have seen, yes. what would be your starting point? Well, I would say, look, you need people, you need technology, I need to put the systems in place. For each of these major items that the plan, the recovery plan has identified, we need to set up a war room, a situation room for implementation. We need the people who will implement, we need the, the technology and the systems to implement, and let's get going. Also, the choice of investments approach, if it is, for example, manufacturing, industrialization, what is the quality of those investments, uh, and as well as infrastructures? How are we going about it? I mentioned the case of railways and, and power. We need to really look at certain things all over again. If we, fix, if we could only fix electricity, just electricity, so much will happen in this country, so much. What does it take to do that? We need to look at those issues. And in terms of infrastructures, I would go for even uh, human, you know, labor intensive approaches for railways. Get about a million young people and pay them to, to train them to lay down rail tracks all over the country. Mm -hmm get business partners to work with them, train them, and get them. It will be, they, you don't have to pay them too much. Pay them enough to get them going, uh, and to put enough ma pocket, money in their pocket. It will take these young people off the streets. There will be less banditry, less robbery and kidnapping. Aggregate demand will be boosted. There's a lot of very smart ways in which we can do so much and change the approach to, to governance and to 
public expenditure so that it serves the needs of people and not just the needs of a few contractors. The president said that um, with this economic recovery and growth plan, yes. he will tackle the economy the way he tackled corruption and um, insecurity mm. in Nigeria. Is this plan equipped enough to, to tackle? Uh, this is vaguely written, mm. and uh, perhaps you could look at the economic plan to tell us how this economic plan will impact on the economy such that we see the kind of results mm. that we saw fighting Boko Haram in the Northeast yes. or fighting corruption with uh, the uh, anti-corruption agencies. Well, on, on the corruption issue, uh, uh, you know, the government has done a lot, but it's not enough. And the approach, in my mind, is wrong. Corruption is, is, is a cancer in this country, in this nation. And I'm all for fighting it. But you see, if you take the policeman approach or the firefighter's approach, what you are doing is chasing thieves up and down. And you are leaving the actual task of governance. We run the risk of substituting anti-corruption for the arduous task of <laughs> governing this country. You know, uh, uh, you know they are, they are not. Anti-corruption should only be a complement or a supplement to the arduous and rigorous task of running this country. And we are changing shadows instead of the reality. What I would prefer is to create a special court for corruption where you know the onus of proof is not as long winding as in normal courts okay we've seen you with so many houses we've seen you with so many bmws how did you get them all of that and the proof should be basic so that it doesn't go on forever within three months you, you should be able to imprison somebody for being a thief and also empower the auditor general's office empower the EFCC, they should have officers up to local government level. So that after FARC in Abuja, the money has been sent, they will be there to trail how that money is being used and to be able to raise questions. Why do you have to wait until somebody comes out uh, after being governor, then you start chasing him up and down and the case goes on sometimes for 10 years. You're only they, they helping have, lawyers. They have immunity.